Tropical Storm Lee is hammering the area with heavy rains. Take a look. This is new video taken in New Orleans overnight of some of the rain we've seen. And this is a look at live radar. You can see just how big the rain bands are. Someone could have been killed. And I, I wonder if, if it happened once, if it could happen again. This is the massive pile of plaster, concrete, and metal that fell from here, the 30th story soffit of the downtown landmark. Look at all of that that fell and look how far it fell from. Crazy. The former World Trade Center president says water, wind, and age likely are factors that brought the concrete down. They had some, some previous damage at the lower soffit. We had that repaired and we had that upper portion inspected and uh, that was uh, given a clean bill of health. And a shock to people walking by who think it could have been worse. It's a, it's a dramatic uh, loss of uh, material. You just don't normally see that. It has happened in other downtown buildings of a similar age, but for a, a, a large section like this to come loose, yeah, that's a surprise. The city sent out an inspector and an engineer to figure out what happened and why. Working it at the catwalk. Why Margaret, the Mackles and I worked the runway for charity. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Some familiar faces strutted down the catwalk today for charity. WDSU Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr doubled as a model today at the St. Elizabeth's Charity Fashion Show. St. Elizabeth is a charity that helps various... Who is that guy and what's he doing? <laughs> St. Elizabeth's is a charity that helps various programs throughout the metro area for children. I was happy to participate as a runway model along with Margaret and the Mackles. Fletcher and Travers, the coolest twins in town. Clothing for the show was provided by Dillard's. So I'm so proud of you, and I'm here not only to announce it, but to congratulate you. My congratulations. The $25 million endowment grant is going to Dillard to expand the research of health care problems in communities that need it most. So there are all sorts of disparities that exist in the area. Dillard now can be a player in the elimination of many of those kinds of health disparities. The five-year grant will allow the university to hire scientists, researchers, and staff, and help improve and create health programs on campus. It's going to move us to another, another level of support and indeed recognition in this community. School leaders say this is a big deal because the programs developed here can help the New Orleans community and benefit the city as it continues to build the Biomedical Research Center. To advance academic areas and research and programs for students, the areas include environmental health, global health, nursing, and an overall endowment chair. The grant will also go toward aggressive recruitment, finding students, and creating a state-of-the-art environment for scientific study and research. And those leaders will be so experienced that they will bring to this community new vitality and new leadership. It's hardly the welcome sign you want in any part of the city. Vandals spray painted the windows of this Walgreens on Canal and Barone. And take a look at this mess on the side of a building just a couple of blocks over at Rampart and Canal. NOPD isn't playing around either. Under a new state law passed last year, anyone caught defacing an historic building will be charged with the felony. And that's my latest exact cast. All right, Patrick, and a heads up for those who live in Plaquemines Parish. The parish is spraying commercial citrus groves. That's going on today and tomorrow. And the purpose is to protect the parish's $4 million citrus industry. Parish officials say that those with asthma or breathing concerns should stay inside if they notice the sprayers. Officials, though, say the chemicals are not harmful. Despite an eviction notice from Mayor Mitch Landrieu, Occupy NOLA protesters are still occupying Duncan Plaza. This is video from early this morning. As you can see, they are still camped out on Friday. The mayor said it's against the law for them to be in the park between 10.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. and to set up tents. Protesters say the move is a violation of their constitutional right to peacefully assemble. Uptown New Orleans hosted the Ferret Street Festival this weekend. Over 200 local vendors lined the busy streets selling unique cuisine, arts and crafts, jewelry, 
wall art and clothing. Visitors enjoy live local music and many consider the Ferret Street Festival to be the kickoff to festival season in the Crescent City. So that's some fantastic news there. Hundreds of volunteers raised awareness for an international cause right here in the Crescent City this weekend. Congo Square at Armstrong Park was the site of the 50,000 handmade bones display. Students from NOCA, Tulane, Loyola, Xavier and UNO have spent the last six months creating the bones, making them out of clay. The display is a part of the One Million Bones Project. That's an international movement that uses hands-on art to raise awareness about genocide and atrocities across the globe. The NOPD welcomed its newest recruit today. This is Zia, 14 month old Clydesdale. He's pretty small now by horse standards, but he will keep growing over the next four years. The owner of Zia restaurant, Greg Reggio, donated the horse for the NOPD's mounted unit. Zia will be part of the team that works crowd control during special events in the city. Reggio also worked to donate $15,000 through Southern Eagle Sales Service, the Louisiana Hospitality Foundation, and the Horses, Hops, and Cops fundraiser held in February. <laughs> Oops.